Hello, everybody, and welcome once again to The Verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers. We're here every week at about this time to discuss issues that are pertinent to you and anyone else that lives in Oklahoma. And this week, we're talking about leadership. We are, and I want to welcome back the leadership to The Verdict. You've been gone a few weeks, and I really am glad you're back. The viewers are particularly glad, <laughs> but I, I am as well. Well, well I, I you, watched the shows. I thought you did fine without me. I was afraid I wouldn't get to come back, but, well you, but uh, thanks for letting me back. Since you came back with the Hornets, you can stay. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, leadership. We're going to be talking about an organization called Leadership Oklahoma City. Been here about 24 years. Uh, somebody said once that leaders are, are born, not made. They may be born, but they have to be trained and uh, to function effectively. And in Oklahoma City, we have an organization that's doing that very well at all levels, and we'll hear from them today. And we'll get started when we return. You're watching The Verdict. We're discussing Leadership Oklahoma City. We'll be right back. For one Oklahoma-based company, success didn't happen overnight. Initially, the days were long, 80-hour weeks common. As we grew, we wanted to share our success, and the ideals of corporate and civic responsibility found a welcome home. Today, we're the largest investor in the Sooner State and a source for exciting, new, high-quality jobs. We're Chesapeake Energy, committed to building a better Oklahoma. All children deserve a life of hope and love, but sometimes they experience a life of pain, neglect, and abuse. When that happens, each child deserves all the quality, assistance, and representation that can be offered in our legal system. For more information, call 23CHILD. Oklahoma Lawyers for Children, helping to bring hope and love back to the lives of abused children. Hi, I'm Court Diffney. With all of the change that has taken place in the car industry in the past decade here in Oklahoma, it's hard to find a family-run business anymore. One of the things that makes us different is that if you visit any one of our three locations, you're going to find one of our family members there ready to help you. Does that really make any difference? We really believe it does. So I invite you to come out and experience the Diffie family difference and decide for yourself. Welcome back to the set of The Verdict. Mick Cornett, Kent Myers, and Kent's going to introduce today's guest. We are very pleased today to have two guests that are going to talk to us about Leadership Oklahoma City. On my right is Beth Short, the Executive Director of Leadership Oklahoma City. She's a graduate of East Carolina University, University of Chicago, and University of Central Oklahoma. As a former English instructor at the collegiate level. Has been involved in many collegiate activities uh, while she was teaching, but uh, more recently been involved in more Oklahoma City community activities, uh, representing oftentimes Leadership Oklahoma City. She's been the executive director for 13 years. However, this is her first visit to The Verdict. We hope not your last. Beth, welcome to The Verdict. Thank you for having us. On my left is a uh, friend, uh, Jim Sherrick, a shareholder in the McAfee and Taft law firm, the largest law firm in Oklahoma City. Uh, he is an undergraduate at the University of Oklahoma uh, and the uh, University of Oklahoma Law School. Practiced uh, in both Texas and Oklahoma for 20 years. Has been involved in leadership Oklahoma City in varying capacities, and as, both as a participant, as a, as a student, if you will, and now as a manager or a leader. Uh, his first visit, Jim, welcome. Thank you. We're glad, glad to be here. here. Thanks. Beth, let's start with an overview. What is Leadership Oklahoma City? Why do we need it? What does it do? And, and what are your accomplishments that, that you think are, you're most proud of? Leadership Oklahoma City is what's typically called a community leadership program. And what that means is, is that we take people from around the community who are interested in becoming more involved in community service and really better at community service. And they go through a series of classes. Uh, we started with one class 24 years ago uh, for adults. It would meet once a month from September through May, and each month we look at a different issue. For example, our next class will be on health and, hum uh, health and medical services. Next month it will be human services. Uh, we've, we did public safety last month, and so they will get an in-depth look at those issues that are important to our community through uh, various activities. <clears throat> They'll have site visits. 
Uh, they'll have lecturers, they'll, they'll see presentations, they'll do uh, some hands-on activities. For example, on Government Day, we very typically do a mock city council. Uh, in addition to that program, which is now in its 24th year, we have another program for adults that's brand new this year called LOYAL, which stands for Linking Oklahoma City's Young Adult Leaders, and that is for young people who are really just getting started in the community. Uh, then, then we also have, a, we are the umbrella program for Youth Leadership Exchange. We have three high school programs that, that uh, do some similar things. How did it get started? When, when did someone say what we really need is a, is a leadership organization in Oklahoma City so we can help prepare leaders of tomorrow? It began to get off the ground really in 1981. A number of community leaders, uh, former city councilwoman Jackie Carey, for example, was one of them, had heard of programs like this in other cities uh, and studied those programs, I think particularly the one in Philadelphia, which is older than ours, and thought this was something that would be good for the Oklahoma City area. And uh, so they, they created that first adult program that is still running very successfully today. Jim, let me ask you uh, about how many people have passed through or graduated from the Leadership Oklahoma City program? We have approximately a thousand graduates. Um, as Beth said, we have classes and we, we sometimes get the, this word class confused because we have class days that our classes go to, but, what, but we also have a class of participants and that class of participants uh, goes from September through May of each year. We're in our 24th class. Uh, who are some of the Oklahoma City leaders you can think of that have come through Leadership Oklahoma City that our viewers might be familiar with? Well, we have several who are uh, city councilmen. We've got Gary Mars, uh, uh, Ann Simak, and Willa Johnson, um, a couple of state representatives, Fred Morgan and Debbie Blackburn. We have the uh, presidents of SBC and Cox Communications, uh, Bank of America, Bank of Oklahoma, Bank First, Chase Bank, um, and we have the heads of the United Way, head of, of YMCA, lots of community organizations that the, the people have heard of. Now you have an adult organization and a youth organization. Let's talk about the adult organization. Do they split up into different segments? Well, the, tra the traditional signature class is in its 24th year, and, and we have run that program every year that, that the organization's been in existence. About five or six years ago, we decided we would start a niche program, and by, by that we meant a program that would be focused on a specific need at a specific time. And for, what was it, about three years? Four years. Four years. We ran a program called a Fast Track program in which uh, we, we asked people who were not really, didn't have the time to participate in our regular program, um, and we, we've, we ran our last run of that program, at least for now, we put that on the shelf. And this year we're starting the new Loyal program, which Beth mentioned a minute ago, for young adults. Let me ask you a question, Jim. Um, who teaches these? I mean, you, if you've got the president of Cox, our, our great <laughs> station here, uh, SBC, Bank of Oklahoma and all, in a program as students, uh -huh. who, who are the teachers and how are they selected and trained? By and large, they're Leadership Oklahoma City graduates, although not entirely. Um, we'll have a, each class will have two uh, program chairmen. And those program chairmen are graduates of our organization, and they will find other program chairmen typically for each day. We'll have a day chair or two day chairs for each of the nine or ten class days, and then those people go out and recruit participants. So if, if for example, we have a, a public safety day, very often the um, uh, police chief or the fire chief will, will lead that, perhaps both of those will lead that. Uh, we'll go through a variety of public safety kinds of, of uh, programs and courses that day. But it's, it's, it's community leaders and community volunteers. Beth, what's the time commitment that a student would, would need to commit to, to 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 get the most out of the program? Well, for the, for the signature program, we run September through May. We meet once a month, all day on the second Thursday, except for September when we meet the Thursday and Friday. That's an overnight, our, our first program. So really it's from about 7.30 in the morning until 5.30 at night, one day a month, nine months. Um, uh, you, can't, uh, you can't graduate, can you, if you miss uh, so many? We do have a, an attendance requirement. Um, uh, you can't miss more than two sessions. And it, it's really important for us to have that requirement because we, we have many more applicants than we have spaces. And so we, we stress with our participants that somebody else wanted the space that you're in. So you need to make the most of it, and everybody does. Uh, one of the things I always like to say about in, f in 24 years, and over a thousand graduates, we have never had anybody start the adult program who, say, halfway through it said, mm, I don't think I want to do this anymore. 
Never, never had anybody quit. We've had people move, we've had people die, but we've never had anybody just say, this is not working out for me. One of the reasons that attendance is important is not just learning about the, the, the class information. We are really very committed to the idea of diversity. Diversity in business background and professions, in political philosophy, uh, in, in skills. And we're very interested in that, that every class have a, a wide range of people in the class because we want them to get to know each other. We want them to create a network of, of leaders and, a de and maintain that networking relationship through their, their future years so that we can help accomplish things together. It's very unusual for any class member to know more than four or five other class members when they start the class session. It's more common to know no one else in the class. Hmm. And they're all people who thought, I know everybody. Um, but they really, they really, Jim's comment about diversity is really true, that they get to meet people from all walks of life. At what age do you start considering people? Well, we call it an adult program, so you have to be 21. And, and I think the youngest class member we've ever had maybe was 22. Um, there's no upper age r range. We've certainly had um, class members in their 70s, mm -hmm. although we don't we don't cut it off at any place, and so it could be could be anywhere in between that. And we always laugh that every year the median age is about 42. And what's interesting is that for the first 15 years we had a, a an age uh, range, and I've forgotten what that was. It was 30 to 45. 30 to 45, and the average was 42, and we dropped that several years ago, and it's still the median <laughs> 42. Yeah. So. You know. <laughs> We're going to take a break and get back. We'll have more on Leadership Oklahoma. Beth Short, Jim Sherrick, our guest here in the first segment. We'll be back with more after this. The Journal Record is pleased to be a sponsor of The Verdict. The Journal Record, since 1903, the best source of Oklahoma business news and legal information. S.M. McGladry. We're accountants. We do taxes, business valuations, estate planning, and consulting. And we're right here in Oklahoma working with the owners of small and medium-sized businesses. Steve Wilsey and Stuart Meyer have the resources and the experience. R.S.M. McGladry. In Oklahoma City, the phone number is 405-843-5311. Welcome back to The Verdict. Mick Cornett, Kent Myers, and we shuffled Jim Sherrick off the set, and we have a, a new replacement for Jim. Kent, why don't you introduce our guest? Yes, the first segment uh, was dealing with the adult uh, leadership program. Uh, this segment's going to be talking about youth, and we have a member of the youth uh, council from uh, Leadership Oklahoma City, Kamal Pennington, to my left. Kamal is a, a senior at uh, Northeastern, Northeast Academy. Excuse me, he's a member of the National Honor Society. He's been an officer and member of student council there for a number of years. He's a leader at uh, his school and a leader in youth council. Kamal, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for inviting me. <laughs> We're pleased you're here. Beth, we uh, briefly went over the fact that there are adult uh, programs and youth programs. Let's we'll spend a little more time now on the youth programs. Describe what it is you offer in, in a little more detail, and I think the first thing we're going to talk about is the Youth Leadership Exchange. That's right. The Le Youth Leadership Exchange, or YLX as we call it, is the umbrella program under which we have three high school age programs. Uh, YLX really started at the American Red Cross 11 years ago uh, and ran there for two years and then we always like to say, um, although it was very successful at the Red Cross, it really didn't fit their mission because their mission is disaster and teenagers are not, despite <laughs> common opinion sometimes, disasters. <laughs> so Leadership Oklahoma City had wanted a youth program and, and here was one fully formed that came to us. So for the last nine years, the Youth Leadership Exchange has been housed at Leadership Oklahoma City. 
And we started with one program, which we call Leadership Skills. It's modeled after the adult program that we talked about, where they meet once a month and they look at community issues and, and really learn to network and work with young people who are not much like themselves. It's a very diverse program as well. Uh, we then added, about five years after that, Youth in Action which is, uh, also has 45 class members, as does Leadership Skills. And in Youth in Action, uh, the young people, high schoolers from all over, really outside the reaches even of Oklahoma County, but central Oklahoma, come together and they identify a community need that's important to them as a group. Uh, and then through that, um, that community need, they look out in the community, see who's working in, uh, in that area. Uh, they do a little fundraising. At the end of the class year, they're able to give a grant that supports a community organization that's working in an area that's important to them. Through that class, then they really learn meeting management skills and facilitation skills and some fundraising skills. Um, the third program, which is really a program of the City of Oklahoma City, is the Youth Council of Oklahoma City, and, uh, and we manage that program for the city. And that, that, that class has 18 members who must live in a ward of Oklahoma City. Since there are eight wards in Oklahoma City, we have 16 class members, two from each ward, who serve as the youth counselors for their wards, and then there are two at-large or mayoral uh, counselors, so 18 total on the youth council. And that, that organization is really um, studies local government. Uh, they, they learn about local government. Uh, they participate in local government. They go to uh, town halls and neighborhood meetings with their, youth, uh, with their, their counselors. Uh, they, they provide some uh, recommendations to the city council on issues that are youth related uh, and they really serve as a conduit with their schools. Kamal, let me ask you, uh, you've been involved now for, this is your second year I guess, first in the uh, Youth Leadership Exchange or Youth in Action. Well, actually, this is my third year because oh. uh, two years ago I was in the leadership skills class. Mm -hmm. Next, I was in the youth council, and now I'm currently a board member for YLX. I see. Okay, I was one year behind, uh, <laughs> as is typical for me. <laughs> How have you found your experience uh, over these these three years, particularly the first two, where you were a participant rather than a, uh, a board member? Well, I think the most important things that I gained from both experience experiences were confidence in myself and in the person who I am. And next it was the ability to network with people from all over Oklahoma County. I can't go anywhere now without finding somebody that I met in one of my YLX classes. And I think finally I was given information and skills in how to actually go to my school and actually improve it and improve my community. And it really was very empowering to me. And so I like to carry that wherever I go. Well, let's carry on to your service as a board member. How do you see that now that you're kind of uh, uh, leading the leaders, if you will? I'm just, uh, I'm really honored to be a part of the board. I'm still a new board member, but I, I just think it's my opportunity to give back to this organization that I feel like has given so much to me. So I, I really enjoy that. There's a real difference, I guess, between the leadership skills course on the one hand and the youth council course on the other. Uh, you did the leadership skills first. Uh, did that make uh, you more equipped to be a good member of the Youth Council? Oh, definitely, because I was more you in leadership skills, there are 45 class members compared to the 18 that are in the Youth Council. So being used to that really diverse group uh, really prepared me to deal with all the controversial issues that come up in city government and with those diverse groups of people. So. Well, Beth, help me with the math. How many how many youngsters have gone through these programs by now? Because you've been doing them for several years. We, we have about seven hundred graduates. Seven hundred. About seven hundred graduates, wow. and now with these three programs, we we have one hundred and eight young people every year. Forty five in leadership skills, forty five in youth in action, and eighteen on the youth council. Well, are there any that have gone through the youth programs and then the adult programs, or are they really overlapping? Well, interestingly, since we've started this new program, Loyal, linking Oklahoma City's young adult leaders, uh, we just started that a week and a half ago. And I think I have four class members who are YLX graduates hmm. who went through the program, uh, a couple of them in class one 11 years ago. T tell me about uh, the selection process. Uh, Kamal is an outstanding student. He has a great record. He'd be a natural selection for a leadership program. But how does, how does your organization uh, determine who's going to get to participate? We have an open application process, both for the adult and the high school programs, where applications are up on our website. and. Uh, high school counselors have them, for example, and then uh, anybody can get one. And so the young people fill out an application, uh, which is then read and scored by um, volunteers, some adults, some young people. 
uh, and then about half of the young people who submit an application are selected for an interview. So we interview, oh, around 130 every year, and then uh, there's a selection committee uh, made up of uh, adults and some young people who are graduates of the program who go through that uh, the now stack of, of applications and, and make those decisions. We don't take more than three students from a school for a program. No matter the size of no the school? No matter the size of the school, it's not, it's not uh, prorated in any way. And so th yeah, they have to work within the confines of no more than three per program per school. Uh, for the Youth Council, of course, they have to work within the confines of the ward. You must live in that ward of Oklahoma City. And so, so they sort them out a little bit like that, and then they start working through their scores. It's a very, very fair process. Um, I, the, the committee's different every year, and I get to watch most years, and, and I'm just really impressed with how seriously people take it and what a fair process it is. Uh, but unfortunately, of course, since we, we, we can only take about half of the young people who apply, it's, it's disappointing for some. Well, we have run out of time, but uh, Beth and Kamal, I want to appreciate both. Uh, thank you both and let you know how much I appreciate you all coming on The Verdict and uh, learning us learn more about Oklahoma City and the leadership Oklahoma City opportunities. We're glad to be here. Yeah, thank thanks you. very much and good luck in the future. Thank you. Thanks. Kent and I'll be back with a final word after this. That land next door was a mess. Take more than a lawnmower to revive that land. I heard the oil and natural gas people was cleaning up old oil sites, and it wouldn't cost us a flood nickel. Oh, yes, sir, it was quite a revival. The whole church showed up, want to make a playground for the kids. <laughs> it sure is a blessing. Bringing out the best in each student, that is the simple goal and tradition of Heritage Hall. The focus on the individual shapes the educational experience at Heritage Hall. Each student benefits from small classes, able, dedicated teachers, a solid academic curriculum, and exceptional co-curricular programs of athletics, arts, community service, and other activities, parental involvement, personalized counseling, and the development of responsibility, integrity, and love of learning. If you want education taught with pride, then you want Heritage Hall. Welcome back to the set of The Verdict. Mick Cornett and Kent Myers we have visited this week on Leadership Oklahoma City. Yes, Beth Short, uh, Jim Sherrick, and Kamal Pennington were very kind to join us and tell us about their uh, respective programs. Uh, it's a great program that they run. Uh, the results are just amazing and uh, being a parent of a student that has gone through the Youth Council and Youth Leadership Exchange uh, programs. Uh, it's uh, very worthwhile. You see on the screen the website for Leadership Oklahoma City, LOKC.org. Also want to give you our web address. It's theverdict.tv. Go there and you can send us an email about what you'd like to see on a, a future edition of The Verdict. Also want to pass along the results of an online poll that we conducted on a previous show. The question was, is the use of under God in the Pledge of Allegiance unconstitutional? And our viewers said that 47% yet yes, it was unconstitutional. 53% said, no, it's not. We'll be back with another edition of The Verdict next month. The preceding program was produced by the Production Services Group at Cox Communications, exclusively for the Cox Channel.